Recently, the topic of buying eight houses for a hundred thousand yuan and buying a house for a thousand yuan in Hebei city of Henan province has sparked heated discussions online. It's important to know that although housing prices are falling. Even in third and fourth tier cities, the average price of a house is not less than five thousand yuan per square meter, let alone tens of thousands of yuan per square meter in first tier cities. So why are houses in Hebei city so cheap? According to mainland media reports, from October twenty twenty, thirty nine year old Beijinger Ding Lun decided to buy cheap houses to use as a warehouse for his business. He noticed that the houses in the old city area of Hebei. Located in the northern part of Henan, were affordable and convenient for transportation. Hence, within the following half month, he purchased eight houses, spending a total of a hundred thousand yuan. The cheapest house cost one thousand yuan, with additional one thousand yuan in agency fees, totaling only two thousand yuan. Ding Le said, "For a thousand yuan, you can't even buy a mobile phone right now, so I just bought it for fun. If it doesn't work out, I can turn it into a haunted house." Remote live streaming would work, and there will surely be people interested in watching. Recently, Ding Le spent another eighteen thousand yuan to buy an old three-bedroom apartment, making it the fifteenth house he has purchased in Hebei. Ding Le also planned to buy more properties in Hebei and move his online store to the area. A real estate agent in Hebei revealed that in the Shanchen area and the Hushan district of Hebei, one can buy a second-hand property with a seventy-year lease for twenty or thirty thousand yuan. There are also ones available for over ten thousand yuan, but those houses are older and do not have property management fees, and only a few yuan per month are required for sanitation fees. Hebei City is a perfection-level city in Henan Province, and also one of the fourteen cities in the core development area of the Central Plains Urban Agglomeration. Hebei was once a coal resource-based city, but with the exhaustion of resources and continuous population outflow, the city is experiencing deepening aging and a large number of vacant houses in the old city area. With high housing prices in major Chinese cities and the unaffordability for ordinary people who might work all their lives to buy a house, many disheartened young people have flocked to Hebei to buy these cabbage-priced houses so they can lead a laid-back life in their own homes. A WeChat group called Living in Shanchan has nearly four hundred members, almost all of whom have bought houses in Hebei or are planning to do so. Xiao Bai, a thirty-year-old from Zhoukou City in Henan, recently decided to buy a house in Hebei as well. Xiao Bai once worked in Tinghua Park in Beijing, doing inventory for a medical experiment team's warehouse. His monthly salary was just over four thousand yuan, and with two thousand five hundred yuan going towards rent, he had little left over. After a year in Beijing, his health began to decline. Shalbai stated, "Beijing is a paradise for the wealthy. It's unbearable for ordinary people. I spent each day consumed by financial worries, and I never had a good night's sleep." Shalbai then moved to Dongguan, but couldn't find work. That's when he decided to come to Hebei. He describes himself as a wall hanger, meaning someone who does nothing every day, not working, just lying in bed waiting for the end. A netizen nicknamed "Unlucky Child" live streamed his house buying story on a Hebei forum in December 2020. After years of working in Shanghai and saving a few tens of thousands, he came to Hebei and spent 37,000 yuan to buy a house where he now lives in seclusion. Du Fen, a 32-year-old from Yingbing City in Shichuan, bought a house in Hebei at the northernmost township in the Hushan District in Hebei two years ago. And has been living there ever since. Previously, he has worked in various roles, including auto repair and beauty, photography, and factory work. When he turned thirty, he suddenly became weary about his laborious lifestyle and came to Hebei to live a more laid-back life. Mainland media quoted scholars' analysis, stating that the phenomenon of a cabbage-priced housing is not an exception, but rather a common issue facing many old industrial areas in the northeast and northwest China. Similar phenomena can be observed in many third and fourth-tier cities in these regions. 
For example, declining resource-based cities such as Hegang in Heilongjiang Province, Yumen in Gansu Province, Fuxing and Anshan in Liaoning Province, and remote frontier town can all offer houses at prices of tens of thousands of yuan. In October last year, a news story about a female artist buying a property in Hegang for fifteen thousand yuan made it onto the trending list. Exhaustion of resources, drastic reduction in investment, population outflow, and urban shrinkage are all important reasons for the significant decline in local real estate. Financial analyst company Guangzhou Trigger Trend stated that the situation in Heigang is spreading from the northeast to the northwest of southwest, and has now extended to Jiangxi River Delta and Greater Bay Area. The report mentioned that Anhui's Huanan City has witnessed second-hand residential properties priced at a few hundred yuan per square meter. It further projected that most of the other small cities in mainland China could experience a Huanification trend, which will likely become the norm in the future. Furthermore, in recent years, under the impetus of China's policy of monetization of shanty town renovation, nearly all cities have become infatuated with building new towns. The promotion by high turnover developers like Evergrande and Country Garden has led to a proliferation of high-rise buildings sprouting like bamboo shoots after a spring rain. The number of new houses built is excessive, yet the population in third and fourth tier city is not increasing but decreasing. This accelerates the speed at which old houses are abandoned. Thus, it's not surprising that housing prices have fallen to shocking levels. According to a report from the World Bank, the real estate industry accounts for about 30% of China's GDP. Data from Moody's Investor Services also show that 30% of local government revenue, 69% of household assets, and 26% of bank loans in China are related to the real estate industry. Real estate is a long chain industry influencing the development of dozens of upstream and downstream industries, including rebar, cement, decoration, home appliances, and furniture. For many years, the Chinese government has defined real estate as a pillar industry. Of the Chinese economy, however, in recent years, China's real estate market has been hit by multiple crises, including developer debt defaults, halted pre-sales residential projects, declining house sales and prices, coupled with the wave of closures of brick-and-mortar stores and factories leading to widespread unemployment. The Chinese real estate market is facing a bubble crisis under the severe supply-demand imbalance. It has moved from being an engine of growth to a drag on the economy. Qingdao's real estate market is about to collapse. Just look at the current state of the Oriental Movie Town Sales Office during the weekdays. It's quite a pitiful sight. With a mass employee exodus and no customers, they can't even afford to hire elderly actors to play potential home buyers for a day's wage of one or two hundred yuan. Is there any hope left for Qingdao's real estate market? Recently, when I was scrolling through my WeChat moments, I noticed a strange phenomenon. I have many wealthy business owners on WeChat, and many of their posts are about real estate. It's clear that these business owners are in a state of panic. The reason for their panic is that they can't sell the properties they've had listed on various platforms for over a year. They want to liquidate their assets, but they can't because there are no buyers. Essentially. The possibility of selling off their properties seems like a pipe dream. The man recording the video explained that he has many friends who are real estate agents. His friends have confided to him that there's virtually no transaction volume for both renting and selling houses right now. One friend who has been in the real estate business for seven or eight years has decided to switch careers due to the inability to make money in the current market. And he has no intention of returning to the industry. China's economy is suffering, and the considerable amount of mortgage holders are struggling to keep up with their payments. As a result, they've chosen to default on their loans and move back to their rural hometowns, effectively abandoning their homes. In the end, we had to admit defeat. We just couldn't hold on any longer. We are giving up our house. We have made up our minds. We can no longer stay in this city. We have no choice but to return to our rural hometown. I'm packing our belongings today. I've arranged for our child's school transfer. 
and I'm not worrying about our credit score anymore. If it's ruined, so be it. We can't bear the burden any longer. We are on the brink of madness. Our mortgage is 600,000 yuan payable over 30 years, which amounts to 3,100 yuan per month. Before the pandemic, my husband could earn about 6,000 yuan a month. Aside from paying the mortgage, the remaining sum could only be used for daily expenses. This woman who decided to default on her loan disclosed that even though she had been paying her monthly mortgage of 3,100 yuan for five years, she still owes the bank over 500,000 yuan. The auction base price for her current home is only 300,000 yuan. If sold at this price, she would still owe the bank over 200,000 yuan. Plus, the bank would impose fines and there would be litigation fees and attorney fees that they would need to bear. With these expenses, the money they earn each month will not even be enough to cover the fines, let alone repay the debt in their lifetime. I want to share my experience as a warning to everyone. Think thrice before purchasing a home or car. Only buy when you can afford it and do not when you can't. Natural disasters and accidents are unpredictable. Don't corner yourself with no way out. In the past, Chinese authorities encouraged the public to buy houses to stimulate GDP. However, many people treated houses as investment or financial products. Local governments continuously sold land to maintain their land-based finance and invested the money they received back into the infrastructure. As more and more buildings are constructed, the number of houses sold by real estate developers is far from matching the fast construction speed. Previously, the State Council of China announced that there are currently 600 million residential buildings in urban and rural China. The number of urban residential buildings is over 47 million, including both residential and non-residential categories. Even if residences make up 30% of each residence accommodates 100 people, urban houses alone could accommodate 1.4 billion people, the entire nation's population. The vacancy rate is significantly high, clearly indicating that the oversupply of houses has become a problem. So what are the consequences of this housing oversupply? In 2022, China's sale revenue of newly constructed residences plummeted by 28%, equivalent to only 1.7 trillion USD, a five-year record low. This slump is due to several factors. The wave of defaults on debts by real estate companies, delays in the construction of pre-sales properties, and measures to control the pandemic eroding consumer confidence, all of which led to a decrease in sales area to a near decade low. In second, third, fourth, and fifth tier cities, there is a massive number of unsold houses with ghost cities appearing in many areas in Jiangsu and Zhejiang provinces. Even first-tier cities couldn't escape from this housing market crisis, with property markets continuously in the doldrum. The man who recorded the video revealed that since April or May of this year, transaction volumes in the Shanghai property market have started to deteriorate. From various sources, he learned that many real estate agents have already begun to slack off. Many are seeking other career paths, turning to selling insurance or delivering food. This is a reflection of the stagnant state of Shanghai's property market. Compared to those living in large cities like Shanghai or Beijing, residents in smaller cities are feeling the pain of the housing market downturn more acutely. Among the 70 cities surveyed by the National Bureau of Statistics of China, the average price of new homes in 35 third tier cities fell year on year for the 13th consecutive month in February. The Bureau did not disclose exact prices, but real estate brokers reported that housing prices in some cities dropped by 20 to 30 percent from the peak. And in smaller cities not covered by the official survey, such as Liaoyuan City, and the price drop was even more substantial. According to Reuters, Emily, a resident of Langfang in Hebei province, revealed that her apartment is now priced at 8,000 yuan per square meter, less than half of what she paid three years ago. I have already made a down payment of several hundred thousand yuan and paid off more than one million yuan in loans, but I still have over one million yuan to repay, said Emily. Emily continued, This year I don't plan to buy anything. I have to tighten my wallet. It's unbearable. 
Social media content creator Jane, who owns 1.5 million yuan apartment in downtown Chongqing, has seen her apartment's value depreciate by about 14 percent. Jane and her husband have stopped buying new clothes and going out. It feels like we bought ourselves a prison, Jane said. Analysts predict that China's real estate industry will continue its slump in 2023, casting a shadow over the overall economic recovery. Data shows that China's manufacturing PMI fell to 48.2 in May, contracting at a rate faster than expected. The growth in the service sector slowed down to its lowest level in four months. Subsequently, the yuan fell 0.3 percent against the U.S. dollar to 7.1090, a level unseen since China implemented strict public health restrictions last November. Due to factors such as industrial output, profits. Retail sales and loan growth failing to meet expectations, the yuan fell by more than 2.6 percent in May. Patrick Wu, co-head of trading in Asia Pacific and Middle East at investment bank Credit Agricole (CIB), told Bloomberg that continued divergence in monetary policy between China and the United States makes it difficult to narrow the yield spread in the future. This could undermine investors' demand for onshore Chinese bonds and put pressure on the yuan. Wu analyzed that the trading boom brought about by reopening has ended, and the divergence in interest rate policy between China and the U.S. can indeed be felt. Global traders are now unlikely to continue buying Chinese assets in large amounts. Analysts suggest that the yield spread between the U.S. and China might not narrow in the next three years. Making Chinese assets less attractive to global investors.